In this video, we're talking about mice in your RV while we are not friends. Mice in an RV, they are not friends. You cannot be friends with a mouse in an RV. They have teeth that continuously grow and they need to chew to keep them in check. That means that they will chew on your wiring, your plumbing, your wood, anything that they can get to that they can chew on, they will chew on it. While we've really never had until this year problems with mice in our RV, there are a lot of different options that you can try to maybe help minimize the fact that they come in your RV or that they can get in your RV and ways to get rid of them once they've gotten in your RV. What works for one person may not work for another person. Everybody has a different opinion on how to get rid of mice. In this video, I'm just gonna cover as many as I can. Some I've used, some I haven't, but I wanted to give you the full list and breakdown of what you need to know. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is maybe how to keep mice from getting in your RV. They can get in through a little bitty hole anywhere on the outside. So you wanna check the outside of your RV for holes because when RV companies put in pipes and things that come into the camper, they may drill a bigger hole than what is actually needed. And so that leaves a gap. The things that you can do with these gaps is you can fill them with steel wool you can put the steel wool in and you can cover them with the foam that is for pest. It has something in it that the mice don't like and they will not chew on it. But if they happen to chew through it and they get to the steel wool, they don't like to chew through steel wool. And I have tested this in our house a bunch of times. We have some pipes that come out under the bathroom sink and we had had mice that come in and out because, well, we live in the country and we have lots of mice. I have lots of experience with this. Once I put the steel wool around the pipes, we didn't have problems with the mice going up under the, the sink. Now, I think you need to know about the steel wool is the reason you want to cover it with the foam is because steel wool, if it's in an area that gets wet, it will rust. So that is just a note about that. I'm going to leave links in the description box below on all the things that I'm going to talk about today. Now, you can also, instead of steel wool, you can get like a galvanized mesh with a very small hole that they can't get through and they won't chew through that. But don't use an aluminum wire because mice can chew through aluminum. Make sure you get a steel wire mesh and not aluminum mesh because it will make a difference. Like I said, the steel wool can rust if it's in an area that gets wet. They do make a copper mesh that is like the steel wool that you can use in the place of steel wool if it's a place that's gonna get wet that you don't want to put the foam over the top of it. While I have tried this, it didn't seem to work for us, but they say Irish Spring is something that you can put in your RV. You buy the bars of soap and cut them up and then you put them all over the place. So I guess you have a fresh smelling RV and not supposed to have mice. I have had our spring in here and the mice still came in. They didn't really care. Actually, I uh, had a few bite marks on some of my Irish spring. So I am sure that that didn't deter them at all. Maybe my mice liked Irish spring. Maybe they were Irish. I don't know. Now, another thing that they say that you can put in your RV to help deter mice is mothballs. Now, my experience with mothballs from just houses and stuff, it may also detour the people that are staying there. Cause for me, mothballs stink. And I don't know that I want my RV smelling like mothballs, even if I have mice. Now, another option that I had found, which I have not tried, is peppermint oil. I saw a bunch of people say that you can take cotton balls and put peppermint oil on the cotton balls and throw these cotton balls around. It will detour the mice from coming in. They don't like the smell of peppermint and that it will keep them away. And that, I think your RV might smell good. Dryer sheets are also another deterrent that people say works. 
haven't tried it, but they say that is another thing that you can try. They have little sonic machines that go in your house that put out noise. And if you have pets, sometimes that can affect your pets. We had the little things, the sonic things, and the mice still came around inside our house. So I have tried those in our house. Another thing, you can have a cat. If you get a lazy cat, it might not work. But if you have a cat that likes to explore, a cat in your RV can help keep mice out. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is how do you know you have mice? Well, I'll go ahead and tell you, you'll start finding little things in your little cabinets here and there and everywhere. They will start pooping and you will see the poop. When you see the first sign of poop, most likely you have multiple mice and it won't take long before that little poop turns into a lot of poop and you have to get on it then to keep them from tearing up your RV because mice can wreak havoc on your RV. They can wreak havoc on your home too. They can mess up a lot of stuff and especially in an RV with so much electrical wires and stuff that are just kind of hanging around, it will really mess you up. You can get no-kill traps for mice. I personally have never used these. This is where things are gonna get a little sensitive. I feel like if I catch the mouse and I put him outside after I've caught him, he's gonna come right back because he knows where he was getting food, he knows where he was getting his last meal. He's just gonna come back. Now, I guess you could take him, drive him down the road for five or 10 miles and drop him out. My idea of getting rid of them is getting rid of them. Now, there's quite a few options in this category that you can do. One, you can use a regular mouse trap that snaps. But in the past, I've learned that a lot of times they just get a free meal they'll grab whatever's off of the end of it, it'll snap and they're quick enough, they get away before it snaps on them. So to me, those are okay. If the side of the mouse like bothers you on that, you can take it, put it in a paper bag. Once it's snapped, you can take the paper bag, roll it up and dispose of it so that you don't have to actually get the little mouse off of it if that's something that bothers you. Then they make sticky traps. Well here, is my thing. Now, while I do want the little mouse to go away, I don't like the torture of a sticky pad. I've done sticky pads in the past and typically, I usually find the mouse is still alive on the sticky pad. And to me, that is torture and I am not in to torture in the little mouse. And with the snap traps, I understand that sometimes it might not kill them if it doesn't catch them in the right place because I've had that happen before. Now, my favorite thing that I have found as far as a mouse trap is an electric mouse trap. This one, we have, like again, we live in the country in our house. They'll cut the fields around us and then all the mice just run in our house. We were having problems with mice and we could not catch them. They, uh, the mouse traps would snap. They wouldn't get on there. That was when I tried the sticky trap and found a couple of them, but they have to run over the top of it to catch them, which you put them along the walls. This here has got batteries and you just, you turn it on like this. And when the, you put bait in the back and when the mouse comes in, it electrocutes him and it's instant. And I think this one has been the best scenario because if they walk in, they're not coming back out. There's no way, to, I've not had the bait gone on this and no mouse. Other than preventing mice getting in and ways to get rid of them is also to keep things up that they can get into and that sometimes will keep them from coming in. We decanter everything when we put it in our pantry into sealed containers so that way they don't have anything that they can eat because believe me, 
they will eat anything they can. The mouse that we got in, we got it in, well, mouse, uh, mouses, because I'm sure there's more than one. Just because you see one doesn't mean there's one because they multiply fast. We were at the hunting club and you know how I found out that we had a mouse? They were eating coffee because we keep, like I said, everything in sealed containers and I don't have anything that's just sitting out for them to be able to eat because I don't want to have ants, I don't want to have roaches, and I don't want to have mice. But they were eating coffee. The little coffee K-cup pods, I had bills in the drawer and they ate into the coffee. I think that is so weird that they would eat coffee. I have to say, it probably is a wide awake mild snail. They're probably like running around craziness because they just ate coffee. I don't know, it's so weird that they ate coffee. <laughs> Another place that these little mice got in, I do not know how they did this. I, I, I still can't figure it out. Inside our oven, I found rat poop. Inside the oven. You would think the oven would be somewhat sealed, that they couldn't get in there. There was nothing in there for them to get, but I just found that was the weirdest place that I've ever found rat poop. I hope this video helped you if you're having mouse problems or maybe keep you from having mouse problems. Till next time, like and subscribe.